Pep and Dexter out here. Our guest is Deborah Stiles. She's a candidate for Ag Commissioner. Good morning, Deborah. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, uh, tell us your story. What is the Deborah Stiles story that got you to this point where you're running for Ag Commissioner? Well, that's a that's a big question, but I'll I'll try to be as quick as possible. Sure. And you can interrupt me if I'm going on too long. Um, Born and raised in West Virginia. My dad was a county extension agent. His name was Jim Stiles, mm-hmm. although he died in 2005. Of course, he's still kind of with us all. Were you Tucker County? Uh, Tucker County, but I was born in Randolph. Then dad as a county agent, uh, we went to Calhoun, then Tyler, then Braxton. And then his mom and dad had the family farm in Tucker County, and they needed some help. So he decided that he was going to head back. And luckily, there was a, an appointment available. So uh, when I was in high school, we moved to Tucker County. And I was actually the first um, female member of the Future Farmers of America chapter at Parsons High. Nice. Had a great Eastern Panhandle. VOAG teacher by the name of Curtis Weimer. And uh, I was also in 4-H, of course, all along. Began that in Tyler County, where we had a 17-acre farm. And as kids, we sold uh, sweet corn in the Wheeling Farmer's Market. We had strawberries that we, I believe we sold, but we ate a lot of them, too. <laughs> um, and, you we know... call that profit-taking. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I, I grew up always connected to farming, you know, ham, bacon, and egg show. And by the way, I want to thank you all here because I saw the photos of somebody, somebody bought a Hampshire hog. Y'all are supporting the, the 4-H'ers, and we, you know, we in the farming community appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I grew up uh, farming, but I was also very, you know, interested in the creative arts. And so I kind of always have had this dual existence of the, the arts, but also farming. And, in fact, um, I don't, you may know my brother, Michael Stiles. Mm-hmm. I think oh, yeah. you know Michael. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're kind of the uh, creative, crazy people in our family, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I ended up... Um, uh, doing a lot of different things, not sure what I wanted to do. I think that's a common story. I worked as a creative services director at WDTV Channel 5 in Clarksburg for a bit, then ultimately went back to school, got a, a bachelor's and a master's uh, in English in creative writing, was writing, you know, publishing, um, but was, again, always connected into, you know, rural communities and ended up getting a Ph.D., um, in rural history, among other areas. I mean, I was broadly trained in U.S. and Canadian history, got a Fulbright Fellowship in 1994, ended up in Canada, actually, and, um, uh, it, you know, did my research, uh, was offered teaching work, and then a tenure-track uh, professorial position in rural studies um, at the Nova Scotia Agricultural College in eastern Canada. And uh, so uh, that's where I began doing rural and ag policy research. And some of that research, for example, was on how do we get uh, more profit for our sheep producers? The wool, because it's globally, you know, it's a global market for wool in this era of globalization. Um, it ended up uh, being a project that we started in eastern Canada, but was informed by the Potomac Highlands Project, um, which was a, you know, sheep research project here in West Virginia that Mm -hmm. my dad was involved with, uh, along with a lot of his colleagues colleagues in extension. So, um, you know, to make a very long story short, um, Michael was having open heart surgery in uh, 2021. Of course, the pandemic had closed the border in 2020. And while as a U.S. citizen, I could have, you know, sort of asked to get over the border sooner, I kind of hunkered down like everybody else did. My life changed. I just, you know, I had decided to retire. And um, so I came back when, in 2021, when Michael was having, was going to have the surgery and just kind of fell in love with West Virginia all over again. I, you know, and I think a lot of West Virginians feel the same way. You know, we love, you know, our place of birth. We love West Virginia, but we also, you know, we, we, we establish lives elsewhere. And it's not until retirement that we sort of say, okay, what's really important in life? Our mm-hmm. family, you know. Our, our home place. And so I came back and started farming um, the family farm. I had bought it, actually. My sister bought half and I bought half in 2003. Um, so, you know, I'd held on to it, but it was like, you know, renting it to a neighbor, you know, running the cattle, uh, but not, you know, really farming. Mm-hmm. But I came back, started farming, and realized how difficult uh, it, and challenging it is for young farmers or for new farmers to get into the business again, to be profitable, 
Um, things had changed um, since, you know, my last interaction with the Commissioner of Agriculture was with the late Gus Douglas, mm -hmm. and he and I had talked about a lot of different things. Uh, when, for example, we were working on an aquaculture project, um, Dad was working on it. I was helping him out with the um, Conservation Fund's Freshwater Institute. And uh, so that sort of led me, you know, to talk to, to Gus about a couple of different things. And, um, and things just seemed to change. And like I said, I was sort of long distance farming, you know, doing a little bit, but then ultimately decided just to rent the farm and then figure out what I was going to do next. And so what I'm doing is farming and running for commissioner of agriculture because people really need a choice, not just one person on the ballot. They need at least two. Mm -hmm. and, and why uh, specifically uh, people need a choice, but why specifically you at this time in your life as a choice? Um, I think there are a lot of young farmers out there um, because, of course, you know the job is that you have to be a farmer by code. Uh, uh, West Virginia Code demands that you be a farmer. Um, and I would say that, you know, I'm going to be a, a, a transitional figure. I may serve one term, two terms, or, or three terms, but I suspect probably just one or two terms so that we can, you know, get more young farmers, um, you know, up and running, successful, because um, one of the things that I've learned in my visits to right now 37 counties, I'm hoping to get to all 55 by the time we roll into the end of October, I've been hearing that things are not really where they could be or should be. Mm -hmm. um, there are uh, some challenges with respect to what we would call our foundational commodity groups. We really, in this day uh, and age where um, – we uh, do some things very, very well here in West Virginia. We can raise cattle in ways that's environmentally sustainable. In fact, there's a uh, big project that's just begun uh, in southern West Virginia in Monroe County and other counties. Um, it's a cross-border project looking at, you know, sort of grazing and carbon sequestration. So, you know, there's a lot of exciting things happening. I'd like to be part of that. And uh, part of that is also educating folks who are not connected to our very small farmer population to say, hey, y'all eat. We all eat. How, how are we going to support our farmers? Let's, let's figure out a way to streamline regulations to, you know, eliminate any unnecessary red tape so that farmers can get out there, make a profit, um, make the Department of Agriculture, which the commissioner is, you know, uh, over, to make that department as efficient as possible, uh, as responsive as possible to the needs of our farming community, and also leverage what resources we have in the state with what resources are available federally, and make sure there's no duplication of services, but that farmers can access what they need. I'm, I'm hearing a lot about, you know, it just bec it's become kind of a maze, and not a corn maze, which is a good thing and, and fun, but. Mm -hmm. The maze of regulations and, and all of that, we really need to kind of streamline that. And I feel that my experience as a rural and ag policy researcher, as the director of what was called uh, before the, I think I mentioned before we go in on air about this merger that happened in my ag school that I was employed at for, uh, from 90, 1998 to 2020. Um, I was the director of a small research uh, institute and our mandate was to not just advocate for farmers but also do research and figure out you know ways that they could be profitable and uh, so I, I feel that I have the right experience mix right now for the times that we're in. Bill Stubblefield. Uh, yes uh, you mentioned a lot of mix. Uh, how do your your skills uh, preempt that of our, the incumbent? Um, in other words we need to as the old saying is we're going to fire the incumbent and hire you. Right. Um, the incumbent has a military background, which while I, my dad was in the military, he served in Europe, but thankfully not, it was during the Cold War, not during active conflict. Um, and other members of my family have served in the military. And while I, I respect that experience, I feel that right now is a time for new ideas and for focusing on how we can advance the interests of agriculture, both within the state of West Virginia, but also outside. Um, 
And I feel that my background, even the fact that I, I received a Fulbright Fellowship and was in Canada, uh, Canada is one of our major trading partners. We recently, as you know, renegotiated the NAFTA treaty uh, with a different name, but but um, uh, the Trump administration and the uh, and Christia Freeland as part of the Trudeau administration, they they negotiated that to make it more uh, responsive to the needs of labor, for example, environmental concerns, and um, we need to really, as West Virginians. Um, first and foremost, support our West Virginia farmers and figure out ways to do that, but also how to more successfully um, leverage federal resources in ways that, that really hasn't happened in the last um, eight years as well as it could. And that's why, but, it, but especially um, not so much the last four years, but in the previous four years, it just wasn't the cooperation that we really have to have between the USDA, which is, um, you know, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and the West Virginia Department of Agriculture. By the way, this is the 32nd anniversary of that treaty being signed, NAFTA. Uh, John Gilstrap. <clears throat> I think one of the challenges that you must face as for running for Ag Commissioner is that there are a lot of people like me, never worked on a farm. I go to the store or I go to the, the farmer's market and I buy something. So when you say reduce regulations, to me, regulations are what keep me from getting sick. So what regulations are you trying to reduce that will still keep me healthy and keep the food safe? That's a really important question. And um, I, I brought my um, campaign card in because as I was talking to farmers um, across the state, and um, I'm thinking of examples in Wayne County, for example, but also here in the Eastern Panhandle, in Berkeley and Jefferson, what I have heard, um, even more most recently in terms of um, farmers that I met at the Shepherdstown Farmers Market, is that um, the goal, everybody has the goal of ensuring food safety and that there is a role for the Commissioner of Agriculture to play in ensuring food safety. And I know, uh, for example, the late Gus Douglas was very, very adamant about that. And I would maintain that. But uh, where there are regulations that, for example, have to do with the square footage of a um, uh, restroom facility within a processing plant, um, or uh, where there has to be certain regulations uh, that are currently in, on the books um, about um, how the wine industry interacts with um, the Department of Agriculture. The, many, of, many of these things involve multi-agency regulations. They're sort of where the... Um, um, alcohol regulatory agency and the Department of Agriculture regulatory uh, functions sort of interact. I want to work as an advocate to say, let us make things as clear as possible. And within the Department of Agriculture, what I would like to, to do is within our staff have a, you know, a team, if not just one main person whose full-time job it is, to be a navigator to make sure that farmers are guided to, and I remember talking to someone at the State Fair from Roan County, farmers, and this was actually with respect to the oil and gas industry, but it's analogous in the, in the ag industry, that farmers need to be guided uh, to do the right thing. They want to do the right thing, and guidance is needed, but uh, being rigid um, about things is, is not helpful. We really have to focus on maintaining food safety regulations while streamlining everything else that's around that that is keeping farmers from making a profit. And, and I apologize, I, I probably should have prepared a little better and come up with more, you know, ex better examples, but um, there really is um, a need to, uh, for example, look at the recent legislation which was opposed by most of us Democrats with respect to raw milk. Now there are many ways to sell safely raw milk. It's, it, it's, it does, it happens, sales of raw milk happen all over the United States, all over the world. But there was some legislation that was just really not well thought out. It, 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 
we need to figure a way through, but um, right now with um, the realities of uh, epidemiology with respect to the avian influenza reality, we, we do have to make sure that we, you know, first and foremost, provide safe food and, and beverages to West Virginians. So uh, I'm talking about those regulations in the main that are connected to how we do business. That are that are just a lot of red tape in in many respects, and we do need to to clean those up. You yeah. use the term rigid <clears throat> earlier. You had invoked the fact your the incumbent is a military, and you think a military is being rigid. Are you saying that the incumbent is overly rigid in the way that he's the, he's doing his job? Uh, my job as a candidate is to let people know um, what I would like to do as agricultural committee. Commissioner, and right now, what I've been hearing from farmers and from the public at large, you know, is that we've got two pieces of the puzzle. We have farmers who need support and need to be uh, able to make a profit. We have people who need to be able to access healthy food. Um, in some places in the state, we have food deserts. Some people are food insecure. Some places, in particular, um, areas that you maybe don't have a lot of farmers like we are blessed to have in certain areas in the state. If, if something happened to the food supply, if something happened like what happened during the pandemic with global uh, supply chains being uh, disrupted, West Virginia right now, um, in the last uh, data from the USDA and uh, the Department of Agriculture when they worked together on the, on the census, uh, West Virginians purchased 800 million of West Virginia farm products, broadly speaking, 800 million, but they purchased 8 billion. That's a heck of a deficit. And so we've got to improve our production. And so I, I don't really want to, I mean, I don't really want to speak to an issue of rigidity, but rather to say that I feel that I have a different ideas mix um, than the incumbent, and that I've heard that there are ways, specific ways, that West Virginians would like to see things improved. Um, one thing that I am thinking about uh, right now, but um, it is not yet on my website, stylesforwvagriculture.com, because I haven't spoken to everybody yet, uh, or, well, in every county, I have obviously cannot speak to everybody, but um, is that I would like to see us do a, a, a policy and regulatory review, go through everything with a fine tooth comb the first six months and figure out with farmer input, with rural community input, and see where we can clean things up, tighten things up, um, make things flexible, but also make, th make sure as I believe John pointed out, that you know the high purpose is to make sure that everybody's food is safe, that people know how to keep their food safe after they purchase it from the farmer's market, for example. Um, and, uh, and that's one of the things that I think uh, would probably be happening very, very early in my term, is just to get on the ground, figure out what's working, what's not working. Um, the other thing is working co collaboratively and cooperatively with the other agencies, uh, like the DNR, uh, working with the legislature, you know, on both sides of the aisle. Because uh, I've told a lot of people, my dad was a Republican, my mom a Democrat. If they could get along for all those years and raise six kids, <laughs> I think we all can work together. Um, so uh, I would like to, you know, have that opportunity to. Uh, build upon what the incumbent has done, but also build upon what previous commissioners did, in particular, Deborah, Gus Douglas. Let me ask you a question in regards to some of the changes that you'd like to make. It sounds to me like it would be a role best suited for the legislature, so why not run for the House of Delegates or the State Senate where you can craft legislation to change or amend laws as opposed to the commissioner of a department who can do neither? Well, the commissioner, as I was speaking with some of the, the current people in the legislature, I said, you know, if I do get this job, I'm going to be knocking on your doors and saying, hey, 
there, here's here's something we got to work on, folks. And um, and it was made very clear to me that um, you know we that is a very important job. And I we have a lot of really wonderful people that are running for the legislature, like Maria Russo, I believe is her name, Troy Miller. Um, uh, the list goes on and on, and these folks I know will work with me to to get the kind of legislation passed. Um, and I have also reached out, you know, before I decided to run, when there were issues that were of concern to me as a small farmer. And let me be clear, I'm a very, very micro scale farmer. Um, my great grandparents settled in Tucker County. They were from Wetzel and and um, in Monongalia County, and I think when the timber all got cut off during the, the lumber boom, which fueled the second industrial revolution, I think that's why they came to Tucker County. I still don't know why, but some members came. My great great my great my grandparents came and settled on Limestone Martin, Mountain, where my farm is, and um, they were able to be sustenance farmers first and then sell into the markets what they, what they did not um, – need for their own use in a way i'm kind of doing the same thing and most of our farmers that are feeding the rest of you all that that are not farmers um they are wholly focused on making you know a significant profit in order to pay all their bills their electric bills you know their uh, uh the power bills the, the 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 equipment bills all of that so i feel that um having a four-year term up to maybe two year two terms as Commissioner of Agriculture, my experience in rural and ag policy and what has not worked in the past, what has worked in the past, what potentially could work in the future. I feel that I have the mix of experience that I could work with the legislature and do a better job as commissioner uh, rather than as a legislator. I have a minute left. Tell people they can find out more about your campaign for ag commissioner. Um, feel free to go to my website, which um, is styles. F S T I L E S F O R W V A G R I C U L T U R E dot com styles for W V Agriculture dot com or reach out to Styles for W V Agriculture on Facebook. That's my political page. Thanks to you all. Um, and again, thanks for supporting 4 H and FFA because they're our future and that's that's another area that I really want to build upon. Will that's you, success. Will you be making any appearances in the area in the very near future? Um uh, your area is the Eastern Panhandle, correct? Mm, yes. um, do you go all the way to Hampshire County, or? Well, are you going to be in Berkeley oh, County or, or Jefferson County? Oh, actually, a... I was at the NAACP uh, and uh, banquet, the state convention, as well as uh, farmers markets. I'll be back here in September and October for various events. But oh, please look yeah. us up. Thanks. Thank Will you, Deborah Styles. Good luck to you. Thank you.